Good morning and good afternoon, researchers and TensorFlow developer. My name is Zhong Weizhou. I'm from TensorFlow performance team. Today, I'm going to tell you more about TensorFlow distributed training. Let me start a talk by uh, sharing a piece of experience that you might already encounter before. Suppose that you have an awesome prototype machine learning model that you work so hard to make it run efficiently on single host with multiple GPUs. Now it's time to really get it running end to end with some more resources. Then you started your four of your beefy cloud virtual machines, each with multiple modern GPUs with connected with fancy 100 gigabits network. With all these resources, you deploy your models and hope to see it run blazingly fast. But wait, why am I only getting 1.5x faster than a single machine while I'm using four of them? Yes, I know, this is really frustrating. If you have similar experience and questions, this talk is for you. In today's talk, you are going to learn how to scale out your TensorFlow 2 Keras model to multiple machine, multiple GPU, and using the optimization we will ship in the upcoming TensorFlow 2.2 release, you are going to dramatically improve your training throughput. I use one uh, case study, Bert's graph, for today's talk. But of course, it has to be this uh, revolutionary NLP model, which is very popular in the past year. I use the fine tuning task, which is the, uh, the squad reading comprehension task, for example. Your training model is going to give, uh, be given some reading materials and questions. And your model needs to answer the questions under the context and be evaluated with the accuracy. The model we use today are available in TensorFlow 2 official model garden, where you could go and download via this link and try it out following. And here is a quick demonstration of the bird squad training throughput. Starting from the first line, this is the training throughput using TensorFlow 2.1 out of the box. With three optimization in TensorFlow 2.2 that I'm going to introduce today, the model is now running 2.x faster. Aren't you excited and, and want to see these optimizations? But before diving into the exciting optimization, let me provide some background information and introduce how the model is synchronously trained on multiple hosts, multiple GPU. And here we are leveraging the native TensorFlow distributed training support, which is multi-worker mirror strategy. In the figure here, we have two GPU devices on two different hosts. And we are using a simple deep learning model, which have two layer A and B, and with one variable each. So each GPU receives a subset of the training data and compute the forward pass using its local copy of model variables. And then it runs through the backward pass to calculate the gradients of each layer. After the gradient are calculated, all the devices now start communicating between themselves using all reduced algorithm to aggregate the gradients. After gradient aggregation, each device will get back the same set of the aggregated gradients and then use that to update their local variables. We call it synchronous because every device needs to aggregate a gradient, get the same set of the aggregated gradient, update their variables before they can actually proceed to the forward path of the next training step. So with so many phases in the deep learning training, how do we actually identify where the bottleneck is? Is it in forward path, backward path, gradient aggregation, or variable updates? How do we know where to optimize? Yes, of course, we are going to use TensorFlow Profiler, which Chu Min just introduced to you today. So let's start it, uh, run the bird squad model, log into one VM, fire up the TensorBoard, take a profile, and then open the trace viewer. And here is the trace you, you will get from the trace viewer. In this view, if you see there's a pink bar, with number five at the bottom of the profile, which means that this is the number five uh, training step in, the, in your profile. And this is the whole operations within this training step. And the first five rows are events that is related to GPU. Specifically, in the first row, you will see GPU computation, which includes forward pass, backward pass, and variable updates. And you can also see a big blue bar called NACL or reduced kernel, which is the gradient aggregation. It's called NACL because including TensorFlow, every machine learning framework is using NVIDIA NACL or reduced library to aggregate the gradients. So by far, 
you may already spot the problem, right? This is exactly the power of the tensor, uh, tensor ball profiler, which makes it so visualized and obvious. So the problem here we are facing is that the gradient aggregation time actually dominates the entire step time. All you see is this big blue bars of NACL or reduce. So how do we resolve this issue and optimize the training performance? Here comes the three optimizations. First optimization, from the profiler, you can get the information regarding the total time used in NACL or reduce, and you know your model, you know the total size of the model variables and gradients. And then from these two information, you can calculate your NACL or reduce throughput. And you also know you use how many machines and each machine, how many GPUs are there. Use these two informations, and, uh, and following the NACL uh, NVIDIA tuning guideline, you can calculate the ideal NACL throughputs. And in this case, we found out that the real NACL or reduced throughput is actually much smaller than the ideal throughput. And then we know that the first optimization is to actually tune your NACL to fully utilize the underlying cross-host network to improve the performance. Second optimization, so if you notice the big blue bar here, it says F32, which means that the gradient aggregation is in the full precision flow 32 format. And we know that the model can be trained with mixed precision, so the gradient can actually be in lower precision like flow 16. So can we actually aggregate a gradient in flow 16, which would efficiently cut the network data that is being transferred by half and thus improve the performance? The third one, if you notice, the NACL or reduce is exchange data across the network. And it doesn't even use the GPU itself a lot. So you see an, an empty space out there uh, above the blue bar. So can we actually push the NACL or reduce forward a little bit so that it overlap with the GPU computation happening in backward path? This way, we can reduce the GPU idle time and improve the training step time. So here is the three ideas, they all look good, and I'm gonna to show how to implement this idea using TensorFlow 2.2. First optimization, NACL throughput tuning. So TensorFlow 2.2 is shipped with the latest NACL, uh, NVIDIA NACL libraries, and we, we have done a lot of experiments on Google Cloud VMs to identify a set of recommended parameters to help you reach the, the peak throughput. Users can append those parameters when running their models, such as the NACL socket end thread parameter here, appended before the model main.py. So if users have different network environment than the cloud VMs, you might need to run the experiment to find out the optimum parameters. And this is suboptimum, and we are looking to improve that. We are working with NVIDIA to see if we can auto-tune the NACL parameters. So in future TensorFlow release, users don't need to set manually test and set any of these parameters. For now, with the optimum NACL parameters, we see a dramatic 30% to 40% throughput improvement in bus squad. This is good for just one optimization. So are you excited to see the second optimizations? Okay, here it comes. Uh, if you remember, we are looking to aggregate the gradients in lower precision, which is flow 16. The prerequisite is that the model is already trained with Keras Mixed Precision API, and we have an online tutorial following this link to tell you about the technical details and usage of this API. Generally speaking, Mixed Precision would use two types of floating point number representation during training, flow 32 and flow 16. If you can see from the figure, Flow32 with more data, it can represent larger range of numbers with high precision than Flow16. But Flow16 has its own advantage. Computing Flow16 in modern GPU can be up to 2 to 4x faster than FP32 computation. So this is really a trade-off between the model accuracy and the computing efficiency. But Miss Precision a API actually try to give you the best of the both worlds. To show the mixed precision under the hood, I will show the bus squad custom training loop code. With this code, user can get the maximum flexibility to change every aspect of the training. And here is the training loop code in TensorFlow 2.1. With mixed precision, your model variable are still kept in flow 32 for best model accuracy. But the computation, including the gradient computation here, are all done in flow 16. 
And after the gradient computation, the gradients are converted back to FP32 and then apply the gradient updates to the FP32 model variables. The apply gradients API here would actually implicitly aggregate the FP32 gradient for you. This is why you see the gradient is aggregated in FP32 from the previous profile. With TensorFlow 2.2, now you can change the custom training loop code a bit to enable gradient aggregation in Flow 16. First, we modify the optimizer apply gradient API. It now takes an argument called all reduce some gradients. When you set this argument to false, it essentially tells the optimizer API not to do the gradient aggregation for you. Instead, the user can manually call gradient aggregation API from a distribution strategy to do the all reduce by yourself. And the best thing is that the user can apply any customized gradient operations before and after all reduce using this menu all reduce, including what we want to do for gradient aggregation in Flow 16. So you simply just need to cast the gradient to FP16 before the all reduce, do the gradient all reduce, and then cast the gradient back to FP16. So this is as simple as what you need to do. And as you can see, you may find a lot of uh, gradient casts here to flow between FP32 and FP16, which is okay because the TensorFlow graph optimization will actually remove the redundant casts under the hood. So you, you only live with one gradient cast from FP16 to FP32, which anyway you have to do because you are applying gradient to the FP32 model variables. So the cast here is just more for your code readability, but we are not downgrade your performance. Also, I want to make one more point. For advanced users that want to customize gradient operation, including or reducing FP16, they can use the custom training loop to get maximum flexibility. But for average user who just want the or reducing FP16 out of the box, so we are working on supporting this in Akira's compound fit in the upcoming, re in the future releases. So in the future releases, you can get or reducing FP16 out of the box using Keras Compound Fit API. So with FP16 all reduced, we are now seeing that the burst squad training throughput is further increased by, by about 35%. We are now almost 2.2x throughput comparing with the TensorFlow 2.1 by far. But wait, we still got one more optimization. The third optimization, if you still remember, we want to reduce the GPU idle time by overlapping gradient aggregation with the backward computation on GPU. Let's take a look at the deep learning model figure we have seen previously. So in this model, when the, after the uh, TensorFlow calculate the gradient of the layer B, we can immediately send out the gradient of the layer B for aggregation. And at the same time on your GPU, you can still calculate the gradient of the layer A so as you can see right now, the network computation of all reduced the uh, gradients of layer B is now run in parallel with the gradient calculation in layer A, and which we can use the GPU resources network both efficiently. To enable this overlap, let's make some more changes to the same custom training loop code in previous optimization. So in TensorFlow 2.2, we introduce these collective hints to the uh, distribution strategy or reduce API by inputting an bytes per pack uh, arguments to the all reduce API, it tells the TensorFlow to break your model uh, gradients into multiple packs and the TPU uh, TensorFlow runtime will actually send out a pack once this pack of gradient is available in the backward computation. So this is as easy as it looks, just giving it a, a bytes per pack numbers, right? But the next question would be, what is the optimum bytes per pack to achieve the maximum training throughput? In TensorFlow 2.2, user needs to do some simple experiment to identify the optimum parameter. NVIDIA provides the official NACL or reduced benchmarks. User can get these benchmarks running on their multi-hosts with their networking environment. And they need to change the data or reduce data size. And typically, what user will see, along with increase of the all reduced data size, so does the NACL all reduced throughput. It would also increase with the data size. But up to certain all reduced data size, the NACL throughput will start to plateau, which means that your NACL is reached the limits of your underlying network. 
And here, the data range of the data size is exactly the optimum pack size, which is sufficiently large to saturate your underlying network. If you set the pack size to be smaller, each uh, gradient pack you send out cannot fully utilize the network, so you are wasting your network bandwidth. If you set the gradient pack larger, then it means that TensorFlow needs to wait for longer time to actually uh, waiting for the first pack of the gradient. It means that you have less overlaps. So we know that the optimum uh, pack size is actually the all reduced pack size that reach the throughput plateau. But this seems to still some work that require from the user. So in future release, we are also working on auto-tune this pack size so that user can get the optimum performance out of the box. So by far, we have seen these three optimizations, and it improves the burst squad training throughput by 2.5x. And these optimizations are very useful in public cloud when the networking between the cloud VMs is limited. We are also working on more improvements as I introduced along with the talk. We are going to support Keras compliant fit, support auto-tune in NACL parameters and the pack size, all coming in the, the future releases of TensorFlow. So stay tuned for all more improvements. Mm -hmm.